Hello beautiful souls. So I've got a tasty little treat for you today. I don't usually do videos like this. Well at least I don't think so but I like the subject. The subject is of course divination, scrying, and psychic works, things of that nature. And so I'm going to show off a little bit of what I created during the last full moon. Now what I created during the last full moon was a set of divination charms and I have used them since and the first time I actually put them to a real test was during our last Spread This Witches broadcast where you know how at the end we like to do live readings and everyone does a little bit of card slinging. I thought that that might be the perfect time to try out my little charm divination set and so I did. And once I had done that, I photographed the findings because I couldn't video what I had just thrown the arrangement because I was obviously on my laptop and I threw on the floor because the set that I've got is quite big and I needed space that I just didn't have on my table at that time. So I took a picture of it and as soon as I put that picture up, people are like, I need to see a video on this. And so I just wanted to say that I am not an expert on on um, charm divination but I love divination and so I'm always exploring ways in which I can incorporate more divination um, connect more with my intuitive centers my psychic centers uh, connect with things that are a little bit more mundane and make them feel a little bit more divinatory so this is exactly what I have done and I was inspired to do so because of my dearest, dearest friend, Penny. And she put together a very beautiful set of throwing charms and talked to me a little bit about them. And I was so inspired that that very night I made my own. Now, I had set the intention early on in the piece to make, at the very most, 13 or to collect, not to make, but to collect 13 items to use in my divinatory set and of course as with all things I <laughs> I had completely just flown off the handle with that and went for something like 30 30 items which I now know was not the best idea with a few things considering now I've tried this set out I'm going to show you what I've done. I'm going to show you exactly the set, the cloth and everything. And I'm going to tell you why I would do it differently the um, the next time around. And yes, there will be a next time. And there was going to, there's probably going to be about five or six more times until I perfect this. But I thought I'll share this stage with you at the very least in case it inspires you to want to do something like this. And also to take some things into consideration when I tell you why it is that I would try to do this differently the next time. So there's a, there's a teensy wincy bit of learning wisdom involved in here so let's get started let me show you okay first of all you need a cloth this is the slow holler tarot cloth this cloth came with the slow holler tarot deck and I got a lot of compliments on this cloth it is the slow holler tarot cloth and so that is my foundation that's the surface in which I throw my charms on and it works really well because being that it's a tarot cloth, it has the elements around the corner, it has a center wheel, everything's very perfect for what I'm aiming to achieve here. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you the charms up close and give you a little explanation as to why I've chosen these particular things and what associations they hold for me personally. And if there's a cool little background story on them, I might involve that a little bit as well. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you one at a time. First of all, I'm going to show you this little crown. This little crown came off the top of a Vera Wang Princess perfume bottle. And to me, it symbolizes success and crowning glory. I thought it was really cute to use in there as well. Next is this Rose Quartz Heart. And this Rose Quartz Heart kind of speaks for itself. It represents romance, love and relationships. And then I have a beautiful old key here that was a gift from my friend Ange. When I originally received the keys, which was very recently, it wasn't for this intention, but then I was like, yes, I have keys to use for this intention. And so the key symbolizes unlocking and the locking of things. So depending on where it falls away from you to unlock towards you, something is locked. So the key the blue eye, this is actually a bead that I acquired when I was in Brazil. And this beautiful eye reminds me to be watchful. It's the eye of the guardian. 
and it represents having eyes on. It's nice. And I love that it came from Brazil. Then I have this rune, this is Pietro. And this is a part of the Elder Futhark. Now, I made this rune myself a couple of years ago. I used a Dremel, but I got very bored with it. So I only got, I think, five completed. And so those stones I just use uh, for things like this, you know, individually to bring about a sense of sigil or talismanic type magic. I have your standard rubber band uh, to demonstrate flexibility or the need to be flexible and also the potential that maybe you're being too flexible. So there we have it. Then I have some brown sea glass and this beautiful brown sea glass represents the haze, uh, the state of being clouded and of lacking clarity in general. Then I have the butterfly magnet. This is actually a little page magnet. It's a Kiki K one actually. And I had this lying around and I wasn't using it and I wanted a magnet in there. I wish I had a better one, but I didn't. But this one actually serves two purpose. One, because this has the symbol of the butterfly and the butterfly to me is a symbol of friendship. And also it signifies attraction. So attracting something to you. And um, yes, but if I could upgrade, <laughs> My magnet, I would. Then I have this beautiful kauri shell, or kauri shell, however you like to pronounce it. It came from Brazil, it came from the witch markets in Brazil, and it represents woman. And the reason it represents woman is see for yourself. It's quite yoni in its shape. And uh, I have to say that I had a friend of mine who makes macrame jewellery out of these beautiful kauri shells, and she and I used to fossick for them along the beaches of uh, Thursday Island and she would call them vagina shells. And so it, it stuck with me. So there is a, a sympathetic attachment there. Then I have this beautiful blue tiger's eye claw point thing. And this is a semi phallic shaped stone that holds masculine energy to me and is representative of man. So I have the shell that represents woman and this tiger's eye, this blue tiger's eye that represents men. Then I have an Australian 10 cent piece. This is the perfect 10 cent piece or the perfect coin for this because it's a heads or tails thing. So we have the head with the crown on it and then we have the tail, which is very peacock oriented. The coin represents money. And if the coin lands head up, it represents money in. If it lands tails up, then it represents money going out. So there you have it. Then I have this beautiful piece of clear quartz. And just as the sea glass represented a lack of clarity, the clear quartz represents clarity. It also represents focus and direction for me. So the quartz is a great conductor of energy and so I like its attributes used in that way. And then I have this turquoise pendant thing. It, um, it wasn't being used as a necklace and I quite like the look of it. It reminds me of beauty. It reminds me of lavish adornment and luxury and things of that nature. It just has this essence to it. And that's why I've included it here. It holds those attributes. Next is one of my children's marbles. The marble represents play. It represents inner child and fun, the having of fun. Then we have a bone and the bone represents wisdom, it represents that deeper wisdom. You can look at this as ancestral wisdom, totemic wisdom, for me, I have chosen to use it as wisdom, full stop. This is a figure, and this is a Brazilian figure. I picked it up when I was in Brazil, and it is part of my heritage, my culture, and so it holds ancestral ties to me. So this is my charm for ancestor, ancestral wisdom, ancestral ties, things of that nature. This orange bead here, is my representation of deity 
and I'll tell you why. I picked this particular bead up when I was in Brazil and I was at the witch markets and I was looking to make a few jaconta, so the beads, the sacred beads, the spirit beads of a deity and I was working with Iansa or Oya and this was the nicest bead that I could find and I really liked it as humble as it looked. I really liked it and so it represented the energy of a goddess to me, an Odisha. And then of course my Odishas uh, shifted a little bit and I now work with Emanja. But Yansa is always with me and this bead still holds that memory and so I chose to use this bead as representations of deity for me. Then I have a desert rose. And the desert rose is to me a symbol of spirit guide and spirit. It's very beautiful, isn't it? Small, but beautiful. Then I have a small carnelian tumbled stone. And the carnelian tumbled stone is symbolic of creative expression and outgoing energy. It's beautiful. Then I have tourmaline. This is my great neutralizing stone. I love to work with tourmaline. And in this particular set, tourmaline represents grounding, release, and an introverted type of energy. Whereas the carnelian was an extroverted or an outgoing energy, the, the tourmaline is an inward type of energy, self-reflection, the hermit, if you will. Then we have a random bolt. And the bolt represents the making of something, the construction and the, the foundation of things. It's literally the nuts and bolts of it all. And I thought that was um, very apt. Nothing fancy, <laughs> a bolt. And then I have a screw. So the screw represents issues, friction and drive. It's an interesting one. It can be facing you or it can be facing away from you and it can be read in different ways. So the screw, the humble screw. And then I have dice. And dice represents the wild card, it represents chance. If you are a lover of numerology, then you can add an extra dimension to this particular piece and read it using your understanding of numerology. But there's a little something something to the dice and uh, I had to put it in here. Then I have a pentagram and the pentagram to me in this set symbolizes earth and spirituality. It also represents a ritual and it was a gift from a friend. And then we have the humble bobby pin. Yes, why is this in here? <laughs> I almost went for a paper clip, I'll have you know, but I use bobby pins in my life more than I use paper clips, and so I thought, I thought that that was a better option. And the bobby pin is about keeping things together, holding things uh, back, securing things. Yes, mostly my hair, <laughs> but I have been known to use it in other ways. <laughs> Then I have a piece of lapis lazuli or lapis lazuli, however you like to pronounce it. And the lapis represents communication and divine inspiration. I happen to really adore the stone of lapis. I have lots of it. I would love larger pieces of it though. Then I have this little rose. It's a little squidgy decorating rose. It came off the crown of my fairy wing crown thingy that I made uh, for a few lithos ago. And the rose represents growth and flourishing. It's also very beautiful. And then I have the half a heart. And this to me symbolizes a broken heart, broken trust, broken friendships and relationships. It actually belonged to a friend of mine when I was in high school and we had a very, very terrible falling out. But I have kept this as a reminder and it seems 
that now is the time for me to use it. It's a perfect symbol of those things, of the three of swords, if you will. Okay, so they are the charms in my set. Now, here's where I would do things differently. Number one, I would have a much smaller set, mostly because when I throw this very large set onto my cloth, the cloth is too small, it takes up a lot more room, and I feel like I need a whole lot more space in order to really get in there and scatter those bad boys. And so a smaller set is much more functional, it's, it's easier to use, and that is important because space is always an issue, no matter where you are. If you've got this in your bag, it's going to be an issue. If you want to put this out, you know, on a table, it's going to be an issue. You know, these things take up space. And when you cast them, you have to cast them with a little bit of gusto and they will fly out in all directions. So if you don't have an adequate space for that, then, you know, it's going to be an issue. But if you have a smaller space or a smaller set, I should say, then you don't need as big a space. So I would stick with at the very most 13 items and choose those 13 items really carefully. The next thing I would do is try to choose smaller objects in general. The same object but a little bit smaller. Take for instance this screw. It's the size of my thumb. It's quite a big piece and so that is something that takes up a lot of space and when you're wrapping it you have to consider that. So I would choose a much smaller screw. I would choose a much smaller version of most of those objects if I had the opportunity to do so and I do the second time around. Mm -hmm. Then I would want more natural objects in there. Now I would want more bone because I really love the idea of bone throwing and so I would want more bone in there. Appropriate bone, claw, a tooth, um, chicken's foot, something really, you know, natural, very, you know, salt of the earth and very organic to read with. I, I like to work with bone. I have bone on my reading space at all times. I have a, a bone in there. I have shell in there, which is technically a bone as well. And so I would like more of that and um, less artificial, more natural where I could. Although I'm not completely opposed to using the rubber band, for instance. And, you know, that's, you know, that's a really handy little thing to remind oneself to be flexible and to remind you to perhaps remember that you are being overly flexible. So it's a great reminder and I don't think that I have a natural substitute for that just yet. It might come to me in, in a few weeks. But basically I would like to have a, a smaller set um, and try it again with a smaller set. Now as far as the cloth goes, I think I would want a bigger cloth despite the size of my set. As beautiful as I think the slow holler is, it's very small in relation to what I feel like I need when I'm casting out my, my charms. And so I would want something bigger. I would also want something with the design of a circle in it because the way I was shown to read this was the bottom of the, of your material, your throwing cloth represents the past, the top of it represents the future, the center circle represents the crux, what's going on in the crux, and the outer middle represents what's there and relevant to the situation but might just be out on the peripheral and is not yet being seen or acknowledged. And so there is, there is a little magic to the cloth itself and so having a good cloth that represents those things for me is important which is why I liked using the tarot cloth however again the size was an issue now I love this set I love this set that I have made I would add one thing to it and that is a stamp a small rubber stamp to indicate placing your mark on something really you know really stamping something into existence bringing something into existence putting that stamp on it I know that I've probably got a piece in there that does something quite similar, but I have had this idea of a stamp in my head ever since the full moon and the fact that I haven't put one in there yet is really irking me. So I would have a stamp in there um, just to add more items, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be anything really big. I've actually got some small sort of Japanese tiny little tiled stamps and you know, that will do, that will definitely do. And so that's where I'm at with my my charm 
divination set. I have given it a red hot go. I've done so, you know, on camera. And in that situation that I explained to you with Spread the Switches, where instead of using a tarot card at the end of our card slinging session, I decided to use throwing bones. <laughs> so, well, not throwing bones, but, you know, throwing charms. And they're not going to be bones to me until I've got, you know, bones, like bones, a full bone set. And that will be a happy day for myself, <laughs> I must admit. But this is a really great exercise for intuition and this is what I wanted to say is that these are really intuitive processes and activities that you can engage in. Anyone can make a set of divination charms using what you have around your house, what you already have emotional connection with, not feeling as though you need to go out and acquire a whole bunch of stuff. This is really about what you've got. If you don't have an appropriate cloth, then get a nice big piece of cardboard and use that. Otherwise, just get a handkerchief of some description and draw some marks on it. This is not something that needs to be, you know, mass produced. It doesn't have to be professionally ma uh, manufactured in any way. It's something that has to come from you, has to come from around your house, has to come from your personal collection, because then it's kind of yours. Everything is yours. Everything has a personal association to you and everything makes sense to you. And by attaching, you know, attributes and symbolism to these particular items, you heighten your awareness as you move through life. Every time you see a magnet, it's going to mean more. Every time I see a rubber band now, it's going to mean more. Every time I see a bobby pin, it's going to mean more. Like these are mundane items that have all of a sudden, you know, drawn to them through my own personal efforts, drawn to them a much more magical meaning, proving, of course, that everything is magic. Is it not? Isn't everything witchcraft? <laughs> so that is the story of my very first charm divination set. I am going to keep working on that set to refine it. So I'll probably have a few more. And if you're interested, let me know because then I will show you the, the, um, the sets that succeed this one. Is that the right word? Yeah, the sets that follow this one. So I um, hope you've enjoyed this one. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Leave a comment if you would like to see any future ones. And um, let me know how you go if you personally create one of these for yourself because they are so much fun. They are incredible fun to use. To just throw something out there and watch it and then try to read it. Oh my God, it's so much fun. I've got a real knack for these and I find them very like village, low magic, folksy kind of um, divination style so I like it and I highly recommend you try it try one out now what I did when I established these ones is I collected all of the items I left the cloth out on the grass under the full moon left it out overnight and then went and collected everything in the morning gave it a little smudgy smudge you know gave it a little intention and um and decided that I would use it as a set to divine with so it's going really really well so far I just needed to be smaller or the cloth to be bigger. That's my only gripe. So with all of that said and done, much love, many blessings. Mwah! Please look after yourselves. See ya.